Welcome to all our early teens class members out there who are in lockdown. I know the shops are not running uh, as usual. I know that the transport, public transport system is not running as usual. Schools are closed. The, everything seems to be in lockdown. But your Christian life shouldn't be in lockdown. You should still be praying. You should still be studying your Bible. You should still be doing good deeds, especially to those who are around you at the moment. Now, this is our lesson discussion for our real-time faith uh, lesson. And this is the second quarter and the first lesson. And the title of the first lesson is The Way to Pray. And this is the first part of it. Now, before we start, let us start with a word of prayer. Please close your eyes, bow your heads, and let us pray. Gracious Father, loving God and King, we thank you so much for the privilege of fellowship. And Lord, I pray that you may bless your young people out there. Help them, Lord, to understand your word and help them to grow closer to you. Help them, Lord, to pray to you and may you hear them when they pray to you. And as they search for you, Lord, may you help them to find you. We thank you so much for everything, Father. May you forgive us our sins and help us, Lord, as we study your word. Teach us, for we ask you this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I said, the... Our lesson title is The Way to Pray, and this is the first part. Now, there's an interesting story if you have read it in your lesson already, if you have your lesson available with you. If you haven't, let me tell you the story. It was about a young soldier who, in the time of the Civil War, lost his brother and father, who were also serving in the war with him. So, his mother and sister had no one to look after them on the farm, and the time of planting came it was springtime and so he thought i need to go and help them if i don't help them then we won't be able to have food by um, the time of harvest in summer and they won't make it through while i'm serving in the war so he left the the battlefield and he came to the white house where the president was and here before him was a guard and he came to the guard and asked the guard please can i see the president and the the guard was very uh, abrupt with him very stern with him, just told him, young man, go back to the battlefield. You're not supposed to be here. The president is a busy man and he can't make time to see you. So the young man turned around, he put his head down, depressed, and he walked away and came and sat in a bench just outside the White House. And while he was sitting there feeling gloomy and down, a little boy came up to him and told him, soldier, what's wrong with you? And then he told the little boy his story. And then the little boy said, I can help you. Come with me. So this soldier got up and followed the little boy. And they came to the place where the first guard was standing. Outside the entrance to the White House. And they just walked past the first guard. And the guard didn't say anything. And this soldier started to think, this is weird. Something is wrong is going on. Because he didn't say anything at all. He didn't stop us. So they walked into the White House. They walked past generals, they walked past commanders, and none of them seemed to say a word. This little boy just walked along, and he walked along with this little boy. And they came to the president's office, the door, and this little boy just opened the door without knocking, went in, and went towards the president who was sitting down with the secretary of state, and they were discussing battle plans. And the soldier was in total amazement. And then as this little boy approached the president's desk, the president asked the little boy, Ted, who is your friend that you brought with you? And the little boy answered and said, Daddy, he is a soldier and he needs to speak to you. And then the president had a conversation with the soldier. The soldier told him all that was burdening his heart. And believe it or not, the president gave him leave from the army, from the war, on the battlefields and actually allowed him to go back and help his mother and sister. That's an amazing story, yeah. The son was able to take the soldier all the way through to the father because the son had a relationship with the father. And truly, Jesus has made that way for us to go all the way to the father. We don't need to go and ask someone anymore. Amazingly, by what Jesus did on the cross, we are able to go all the way to the throne of grace. In Hebrews 4 verse 16, Paul says, Come boldly before the throne of grace, so that you might obtain mercy and find grace in your time of need, to help in the time of need. 
So we can now freely go to God. And the way we go freely to God is through our prayer. Even though we are here on earth, when we close our eyes and when we pray up to heaven, we are transported before the throne of God. And we are making our request before the mighty throne of the heavens. And God, the Eternal One, is there listening to us. And that's an amazing thing. Even though we are here on earth, our prayers are transported all the way to the throne room. And God responds to that. Isn't that amazing? So what is prayer? We can use this analogy. Or we can use this talk pizza, as they say in Pidgin. Think of a married couple. Do they talk to each other? Do they communicate with each other? And how often do you think a married couple communicates with each other? Imagine if um, I told my wife, I love you. And I never spoke to her the whole day. Maybe I'd come and just have a conversation. So honey, well, how was your day? Just for one minute, just talk to her. Oh, okay. And then I go and I don't speak to her again for the whole day. And I come in the, in the night and then I say, Oh honey, how was your day? And you know, that's all I say. And for one minute again. Do you think I love my wife just by the way I'm communicating with her? No, I don't. If we truly love each other, then we should be able to have a conversation. We should be able to tell stories with, it, with each other. We should be able to talk about things because we have a lot of things in common. And that's why we got married in the first place. Because we love each other, we share things in common. There was a married couple I counseled and I asked them, so how often do you speak to each other? We just say hi and bye. And they live in the same house. And they said they still love each other. But you can see that the love has grown cold. If we truly love each other, we should be speaking to each other. We should be talking longer. Believe it or not, prayer is like un unlimited calls to heaven. Did you say, if they were to give us unlimited calls, we'd be calling our friends every single minute. I remember when I was in uh, the medical school and my wife was in Fiji and I was using the mobile network when it first came out, Be Mobile. And it, 20 minutes, uh, 20 kina would only last 7 minutes. And as we got closer to the end, my heart would start to feel like breaking because I knew that I won't hear her voice for another week until I found 20 kina to make another call again. Just seven minutes a week, my heart just ached so much because I couldn't talk to my wife, whom I loved. If we really love God, and we, believe it or not, we have unlimited access to talk to Him, then why do we only talk to Him for one minute or two minutes a day in prayer? If we truly love Him, we should take our time to talk to Him. Now, I'm not saying that you should say a 10-minute prayer when you're up in front in church. When you are in secret, Jesus says, pray to your Father in secret. And you can take as much time as you want. If you want to pray for five minutes, pray for five minutes. If you want to pray for ten minutes, pray for ten minutes. If you want to pray for twenty minutes, pray for twenty minutes. If you want to pray for two hours, pray for two hours. That's between you and your Father in heaven. But when you are in public, keep the prayer short and sweet. When you are praying for food, don't pray about everything else. Pray about the food. Say, thank you, Father, for the food before us. Bless us and continue to provide for us. Please, Father, we ask you and help us to reach out to others. And that's all. Don't continue and say, oh, and Father, bless this one. Father, bless that one. And in, don't make a sermon in your prayer. So when you're praying in public, keep it short and sweet. When you're praying for food, keep it short and sweet. But when you're in your secret place praying, Pray for as long as you want to pray. Because we have unlimited calls, unlimited prayers, unlimited talk time to heaven, to our Father in heaven. So please take advantage of it. Make the most of it. So what I've told you about prayer is that it's basically a relationship. When we have a stronger relationship, we pray better to our Father. We know what to say. When we know Him better, we know what He wants. We know what He wants to hear. We know what He wants to speak about. But when we don't know Him, then our prayers become difficult. And we struggle and we say things that 
seem um, you you've heard of this word monotonous it and um, it becomes stale we keep repeating the same things over and over we ha say the same words we say the same structure over and over just imagine if you saw someone every single day and you kept mentioning the same thing hello dad how are you please enjoy your day at work today and then the next morning you see your father hello dad how are you please enjoy your day at work today and then the next day you see your father hello dad how are you please enjoy your day at work today and then the next day you see your father hello dad how are you please enjoy your day at work today am i getting annoying am i getting irritating well as you as you can see if we keep saying the same things to god every single day it will tire god out let our prayers be earnest let us say it from our hearts to our father let's not do it in structure in some pattern that we keep doing every day god wants to hear fresh prayers from us that come from an earnest heart that wants to be with him and wants to know him so prayer is really about a relationship the more we know about our father the easier it is to communicate with him the easier it is to tell him about our problems because we know him personally we can walk up to him like that little boy and tell him this soldier needs help we can just do it that way and just like that little boy we can actually walk all the way to the Father. Jesus says something interesting in John 16. And let's open our Bibles to John chapter 16. And we'll read from verse 26 to 27. Jesus says something quite interesting here. So if you look at your Bibles in John chapter 16, verse 26 to 27, Jesus tells his disciples, At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Now, what Jesus is saying is that there is coming a time where you will pray to the Father. And I won't even have to ask the Father for you. You can ask yourself, because the Father loves you. That's mind-blowing. What Jesus is telling us is now we can go freely to God and we can tell him our petitions just like that little boy who took the soldier in. Now we don't leave the little boy anymore. Now we can walk freely in and talk with the president whenever we want. We can walk freely in and talk to God whenever we want because Jesus has made the way possible. He's opened it for us and we can go and speak to the Father freely. So when you're praying, Know that you are praying directly to God. You don't need someone to be in between you. Even Jesus says, I have already made the way, so you don't have to ask me. Ask the Father yourself. Go straight to the Father and ask Him yourself. Jesus has made that way possible through the shedding of His blood on the cross. And there's one thing I want to touch also. Many people get confused who they should pray to. Some people pray to the Holy Spirit. Some people pray to the Father, some people pray to Jesus, and some pray to all three of them. So who do you pray to? Well, the truth is, if you read your Bible, Jesus says, pray to the Father. Go to the Father and ask Him. So we should be praying to the Father through the Spirit who carries our prayers to heaven in the name of Jesus. So is that clear? Let me repeat it again. We pray to the Father through the Spirit in the name of Jesus. So what does it mean to say a prayer in the name of Jesus? Because Jesus says in the Word that if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name. And many of us, because of that, we get up and say at the end of our prayers, in Jesus' name, I ask this prayer. But if you look at the ideal prayer which Jesus gave to his disciples, he never said at the end, um, say at the end, in Jesus' name. He says, for thine is the kingdom, the power and thy glory forever and ever. Amen. He doesn't say in Jesus' name, amen. And in John 16, he says, ask me anything in my name and I will give it to you. So what does it mean to ask in Jesus' name? 
If you study your Bible properly, you will understand that when we ask in Jesus' name, we're basically asking in His character. In the Bible, name means a character. So when we ask in Jesus' name, we're basically asking in His character. So in other words, when we do good things, when we think good thoughts, when we meditate upon the word of the Lord, when we pray and we try our best to walk with God through His power, then when we come and kneel down and we pray to heaven, the Father sees as if the Son is praying to Him. He doesn't see John or Mary or Robert or Peter praying to Him from earth. He sees His Son Jesus praying to Him. Because we have the same character, we have the same likeness, and He sees His Son praying to Him. So whatever you ask, He will give it. Because He is seeing His Son praying to Him. He is seeing His Son and Daughter in the likeness of His Son Jesus Christ praying to Him. So when we ask it in Jesus' name, it doesn't mean that we're going to add in Jesus' name at the end of the prayer. It's good to say that because we honor the King. We honor the Lord Jesus. But what it really means is to listen to the Word of God and to practice it in our lives. Because when we do that and when we come and pray to the Lord, He will hear our prayer from heaven and He will give us the request of our heart because our mind is in sync with the mind of God in heaven. It's in line with the thoughts of God in heaven. So whatever we want is what God wants. If you remember Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam came and um, God told Adam, name the animals. And he brought the animals before Adam and when Adam named each one, God, you know what he said? Mm-hmm, yeah, I was going to name it that one. Exactly. Amen. And then Adam, uh, another animal came before Adam. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I was going to name it too. Giraffe came. Adam said, Giraffe. God said, Amen. I was going to say that too. And then he brought a hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. I was going to name that too. All through all the animals. Because the mind of Adam was in tune with the mind of God. So whatever he said, God agreed with. And in the same way, when we are in tune with the mind of God, whatever we pray for, will never be rejected. You will always get, an, get a yes to your prayer. So, how are we to pray? If you look at it, I've already spoken a lot about how we are to pray. We are to pray in the name of the Son. And we can pray in secret, we can pray in public, and there are different lengths to our prayers that we must also understand when we are in those different places. Don't say a long prayer in public. And you can talk for as long as you want when you are in private with the Lord, in your secret place. I, had a, I, ha I have a friend who, who told me about um, a friend that went to pray in the bushes of UPNG, before it was uh, the University of Papua New Guinea. And before they had this uh, grass, grass area, and he'd go to the bush there and pray. And he would see his friends going, so he followed them and he would pray. But one night he decided to go on his own. It was pitch dark there. And when he went and he kneeled down to pray, he kneeled down in the way that the people kneel down when they're trying to start the sprint in the Olympics. Have you seen people get ready for a 100 meter sprint? They go down and one knee is down and the other knee is up and they're in a position that they're ready to take off. So the only difference with him is that he just put his hands like this and his head down, ready to pray. And while he was praying, because he was so fearful, as when a frog came and touched his foot, he let out a scream and he sprinted all the way because he was already in the sprinting position, ready to take off. And he sprinted. So you can have your secret place in the bush if it's safe. Go and pray there if you are used to that. If not, you can find a place in your room. You can lock your door and you can stay in there and pray. If it's maybe the bathroom, then lock your door and pray there. But remember, someone might want to use the bathroom. So find a secret place where you won't be disturbed and pray there. And take as long as you need to talk to your Father. And don't forget, He is your Father. Pray to Him like you're talking to your Father who lives with you. He is your Heavenly Father and He's happy to give you anything you ask for. Now our memory verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18 tells us to pray without ceasing. 
the Muslims, they pray five times a day. And the Jews, they pray three times a day. Morning, lunch, and in the evening. So what about us? How often should we pray? And here Paul says, pray without ceasing. So does that mean we have to give up our normal work and just keep praying, praying, go to a corner, pray, eat our food, stop eating, pray, um, go to the toilet while we're on the toilet, pray. How are we supposed to do that? What Paul actually means is that during the day, we may not find a moment where we are quiet or where we have peace, but we can send our thoughts heavenward. We can think about heavenly things. We can think about the things that make God, makes God happy. We can think on the scriptures, try and memorize our scriptures, go through our memory jam. Those things are important. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that you pray 20 times a day or 100 times a day. It means that your thoughts are always heavenward toward heavenly things. So your heart too is also up there and it's not down here. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. Now, what should we pray about? What are we to ask for? If you read in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about what not to pray for. He says the Gentiles, because they don't know the truth, they pray for food, they pray for clothing, they pray for shelter, and things that they need for their survival. And he says, you don't need to pray for these things because God already knows that you need them. So why do you need to go and ask him for it again in prayer? Just imagine if you went and told your father and mother now, Daddy, remember, tomorrow we need food for breakfast. Or tomorrow we need food for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Daddy, remember, I need clothes. Uh, Mommy, remember, I need school fees. Your mother and father already know what you need. And even before you ask them for it, they will provide it for you. Because that's our responsibility as parents. We have to give you food. We have to give you a roof over your head. We have to give you clothes on your body. And how much better is God in heaven? He knows that you need food. He knows that you need clothing. He knows that you need shelter. He knows that you need school fees. He knows that you need all these basic things to survive. So should we ask him about these things in prayer? No. We shouldn't ask him about these things in prayer because he already knows and he will give it. So what should we ask for in prayer? That's the most important question. What should we ask for in prayer? Well, turn your Bibles. Uh, we'll, go to, we'll go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. And we'll read there. And we'll move from there to Luke chapter 11 after that. So Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. So let us read together. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Now let's turn to Luke chapter 11 and we'll read from verse 9 to 13. This is the same passage, but it's put in a different way. And I say unto you, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more your father in he your heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. So the thing that God wants to give us, that we should ask for in prayer, is the Holy Spirit. If we ask God, He will open up the truths by His Holy Spirit. We should ask for the Holy Spirit so we can understand the truth. 
That's what God wants us to ask for when we pray. He doesn't want us to ask for all the things in this world because He knows what we need and He will provide it. But the thing He wants us to ask for the most is the Holy Spirit. When we ask for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and helps us to understand the Scriptures. It teaches us how to live righteously. It teaches us how to make God happy. It teaches us what God wants, what His will is, so that we can do it. And it empowers us to do God's will too. So we should be asking for the Holy Spirit. So this is why we pray. We pray for the Holy Spirit to open our eyes so that we might see Jesus. So we might understand the truth. And the Holy Spirit's final work is to create the image of Jesus in us. So our character is like Him. Our thoughts are like His. Our uh, words are like His. Our behavior is like Jesus. So when we come to pray, it's easy for the Holy Spirit to carry our prayers to heaven. But believe it or not, even while we are not perfect yet, even when we have our faults, the Holy Spirit pleads with God for us, with moanings that cannot be uttered. It cannot be described. It knows what we need the most. We may be asking for a, a new phone, but the Holy Spirit knows that we need a new heart. And it's pleading with the Father. Robert's asking for a new phone, but that's not what he needs. He's asking for a camera, but that's not what he needs. He needs a new heart. He needs to let go of the sins that are in his life. Please, Lord, give him power and help him. And please don't let him fall into temptation. So the Holy Spirit groans with the Father and tells the Father what we actually need. And that's in Romans uh, 8 verse 26 to 20, 27. You'll see it there. The Holy Spirit groans for us so that we might have the image of Christ perfected in us. So why are our prayers not answered? Well, the simple reason is found in Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. So if you turn with me there, we'll read and it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So it's the sins that we cherish inside that actually block God from answering our prayers. God wants to hear our prayers, but because we are holding on to something wrong in our lives. We are not allowing God to listen to our prayers. Our sins block our prayers. Our iniquities block our prayers. Iniquities are intentional sins. So if someone tells you this is wrong, but you continue doing it, and when you pray to heaven, then your prayer won't be answered. It also says in Proverbs 28 verse 9, he that turns his ear away from hearing the word of God, his prayer shall be an abomination. Meaning God will not answer it at all. It will be an abomination to him. It will be something horrible to God. So we need to look at our lives. We need to search our lives. We need to ask God to send his Holy Spirit to help us to find what is not right and remove it. So that our prayers will go to heaven unhindered. And it will be a sweet-smelling incense to God. Now, in conclusion, prayer is important. We all need to pray. We all need to get on our knees and speak to our Father. We have unlimited access to heaven, free calls, but we don't take advantage of it. So why don't you take advantage of it today? Start getting on your knees. If you're weak and you can't go more than a minute, ask God, please help me to pray to you. And please help me to be earnest in my prayer. And you will see that you won't start praying about yourself, but your prayers will be about others. When you start asking God to help you, when your character changes, and you start becoming like Jesus, you will start praying about others. You pray about mom, about dad. You pray about your families around. You pray about your friends in church. You pray for their protection, their um, guidance, for their knowledge of the truth. For them to help do the right things or be helped to do the right thing. Your prayers go to others and it's not just for yourself. It's not on what you need but what others need. And that's truly someone who is becoming mature in truth. Someone who is becoming mature in the faith. Their prayers change. 
I used to pray for myself a lot, but when I go to the Father now, my prayers are more for others than for myself. And if it's for myself, it's to help me overcome sin or the things I am struggling with, to help me to know Jesus better. Those are the things we should pray for. And that's the way we should pray. And remember when you pray, always thank God for all the good things He has given you. And you will see that He has blessed you with so many things. And don't forget when you pray to ask for forgiveness for sins. But that shouldn't come in the beginning of your prayer. It should come at the end. God is there to listen to us. He is there to help us. Jesus has already made the way. Let us take advantage of it. May God bless us as we continue to study His Word, as we continue to pray to Him. And hopefully we will see you soon again in person. May God bless you all. And please let us pray together as we close. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. Please bless the young people and their families who are watching. Anyone who is watching out there, Lord, may you help them to know you. May you help open their eyes so they can see you. Take not your Holy Spirit away from us. And please teach us. We thank you so much, Father, for everything. And we ask you this prayer in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen. May God bless you all.